right, guys, let's get into this couples tutorial, couples costume tutorial. It's a Carrie makeup, mostly focused on this burn makeup, but we will do a little bit of Carrie inspired goodness. Basically, all I did here with Aaron, who is playing Carrie in this situation, is I did a basic, you know, nice, simple, clean beauty look on her, really glam, really prom appropriate. And then I'm just kind of building on top of it. Obviously, if you're doing this for your costume, you could skip adding all the pretty, pretty fun stuff because it's gonna get covered up with blood anyway. So I just ran black eyeshadow all the way around her eye and then I blended it out with a red eyeshadow. This one's from Sugar Pill, it's called Love Plus. Um, I really wanted to bring some red, kind of demonic, rage, angry elements into it and I thought the red eyeshadow would be a good way to go. You could definitely do this any way that you prefer. If you like Erin's makeup, I have lots of tutorials similar to it and uh, you'll find them on my channel. So after I blended that out, I added a little bit of red eyeliner, or excuse me, this is lip liner, into her waterline just to kind of further bring in that irritated, rage, angry effect. And then I contoured her face with a gray eyeshadow. She's got very fair skin, so this gray eyeshadow kind of contouring method, which I did really sop sloppily and quickly because we're covering it up with blood, just kind of gives her a sunken in, sallow, dead, I don't know. I kind of like the effect of it. <laughs> so now I'm just doing her lips. I did a liquid lipstick. This is Avenue from ColourPop. Just putting it all over uh, matte lips in this scenario is probably great so that the blood that you go in with later doesn't mess up the lips. And as you're continuing going through your night drinking and eating, it doesn't mess it up either. Now I'm just tracing out the blood lines with a red lip liner. You don't have to do this either if you don't want to. Honestly, you could literally just slap on a tiara, go to Ross, buy a $20 prom dress, and douse yourself in fake blood, and the carry portion of your couple's costume would be on fleeky. But uh, I can't believe I just said that. I hate when people say that. That literally just rolled right out of my tongue. <laughs> anyway, um, you don't have to do this part, but I like the effect of it because if you don't want to douse yourself in blood, if that makes you nervous, if you don't want to ruin anybody's house or you know car or whatever you got going on that night this way of doing it still gives you that blood doused effect so laying down that red lip liner and then going in to the lip lines with a cream paint this is from mac pro m-a-q pro not m-a-c um, but you could seriously use ben nye you could use lipstick you could use whatever you want and i'm just using this to kind of give my dribble effect now i'll tell you this if you were going about this in such a fashion that you were only gonna use this kind of um, very intentionally placed droplet situation I've got going on right now, you would wanna take this all the way down your neck, your chest, your arms, your hands, and you probably would wanna put a little bit of fake blood on your dress. Like just, just fun facts, just what I think you would wanna do. But yeah, just going through and filling in those lines with that red cream paint. Then I took coagulated blood gel from Ben Nye. No, this is from Mayron, excuse me, from Mayron. And I am just covering up those red lines with it in just kind of a, I don't know, haphazard, messy fashion. The coagulated blood gel, um, it stays looking pretty wet. It doesn't dry and it stays where you put it. And it's giving a little bit of that shiny, glistening, textured, multi-dimensional effect on top of the um, the red cream paint we laid down. A lot of times when I do special effects, you guys, I just start doing crap. I have no rhyme or reason to it and I hope it turns out okay. In this case, I kind of like how it turned out and uh, I think she looks pretty hot if I do say so myself. And that'll do it for now for the carry part of this tutorial. And we're gonna move on to my friend Chris. I will call him Fur Fur in this video because that is what I call him in real life. And I'm starting off by laying down a bald cap that I cut in half. And I use bobby pins to pin it down into his hair. He has a good bit of hair for a dude, so if you're like naturally bald, you probably are gonna have a little bit more of a time doing this and getting it to stay. But we made it work. Throughout this process, I'm literally gonna do the same thing over and over and over and over again. So I don't know. Hopefully I'm gonna teach you something new. We'll see how it goes. Um, the first thing you wanna do in this situation when you're moving on to the face, the sideburns, the eyebrow area, you need to lay down some Vaseline to make sure you do not pull the hair off of the face. Then I'm literally just going to start layering cotton balls that I've kind of torn up, mashed out, thinned out, and gave texture to all over his face, all over the bald cap, 
all over his ears, all over his neck, any part of the body that you would have exposed, you'd want to do this too. And you can take it a step further and do this all over the face, but I wanted to do a half face thing. So this would be ideal for a Harvey Dent Too Faced tutorial as well. Um, whatever you want to do. So I'm just stippling on that latex with a makeup sponge. You can use a brush, you can use your fingers, whatever. I just use a sponge. Then I realized I probably should create like a little line of demarcation where I want the burn makeup to stop and where I want it to start. And then I just went back in with more of that liquid latex on a sponge and pressing it all over the skin, pressing it all over the bald cap and just gooping on piles and sections and little bits of cotton balls at a time. Depending on uh, your goal here, I would give yourself some time to do this. It takes a little time. Now I'm sprinkling on some coffee grounds when the latex is still wet so it will adhere to it. This gives kind of the crispy, charred, burnt effect that I'm going for. The coffee grounds are optional, but I think it does give a little, little something, something. Once again, you guessed it, we're going in with more liquid latex and more cotton balls. I will tell you the trick here is definitely working in small sections. Um, have a makeup wipe on hand so you can clean your fingers off because I do start to get a little too sticky and like difficult to maneuver your materials with, so that's a tip. Make sure when you're going in areas, like right now, if you can't tell, he recently shaved his beard like the day before, but he did have a little bit of stubble. So I went ahead and put some liquid Vaseline, or excuse me, regular Vaseline, down anyway, just in case. Be mindful of things like nose holes. Sprinkle more coffee grounds. You get the idea. Special effects makeup, like when you're doing it for Halloween and it's not for like production and you're just having, I just got coffee grounds in his ears. That's why he's tripping out. <laughs> um, it's really just kind of playing with stuff, you know, seeing what you like, seeing where you like it to go. And every time I do special effects or whatever, I'm really just kind of figuring it out as I go along. And it's a lot easier than you would think if you just kind of trust the process and your creativity and just go for it. Now I'm just taking tweezers and I'm tearing and pulling at that liquid latex. I let this dry a little bit longer than I should have. I should have waited until it was a, just, just dry enough to not come off of his face when I pulled on it, but not so dry that it wasn't forgiving enough to give me kind of the, what I was trying to do was just kind of move it around and give it some texture and give it like a goopy, you know, gross, ooey, melted, disgusting flesh look. But you know, you live and you learn. Now I'm taking alcohol activated paint. I mix a red one and a white one together to create like a pink fleshy tone and I'm basing out the entire wound with a stippling brush that I got from MAC. Um, you obviously do not have to use, sorry that was my phone. You obviously do not have to use alcohol activated paints. Use what you have, cream makeup would do just fine. But I like to lay down the lightest parts of the wounds first and then I will go in and add a little bit more depth and dimension with darker colors later. I did make that mistake of doing it in reverse order in my last makeup tutorial that was Halloween related. And I will tell you doing it this way makes it go by so much faster and it's so much easier. Excuse me, I am getting over being sick again if you can believe it. Now I'm just going in with a smaller brush and a darker kind of, I believe in the palette that I use, it's called like a vein tone. That was my computer. Everything is going off right now. Goodness. <laughs> like a vein purpley tone and I'm just putting this into the darker, smaller kind of indented areas of the wound. I did it all over his ear. You can't tell. I didn't do a good job getting it shot in, but his ear looks completely flush and flat to his head. So I wanted to give it a really irritated look like it melted. And then I just put it in, in little small crevices and holes and doodads and things of that nature that you see. You don't want it to be all one color and flat. You need to give it some texture. You need to give it some dimension. It's no different than any kind of regular makeup you would do. You want to create the appearance of dimension and shadow and recesses and front parts and all that good stuff. Now I'm just taking cream red paint again that I used on Aaron earlier and I'm just putting it all over. He's fighting me on this because he's a guy. He's never had like anyone put a brush on his eye so he's like freaking out, but I'm not hurting him, I swear. I'm just putting this all over the eye area. I, you can take this a million different ways in the eye area. You could have gone as far as to put latex to cover up the eye and make it look completely burnt off or to make it look droopy, but I am not experienced enough with this to feel comfortable putting anything like that near his eye. So this is the way that I went with it. Um, and obviously you don't wanna use alcohol activated paints near somebody's eyes or mouths. It's very sensitive skin and it could burn them. So I laid down the red color first and then I took a black cream paint from Ben Nye and I just pushed it into like the little crevices and nooks and crannies. I mean, it's really just the same thing over and over again. Like I said, you're going to put down your lighter color first and you'll take your darker color to create shadows and things of that nature. 
And then I did the same thing with his lip. This is really just detailing. You're gonna go in, you're gonna do whatever floats your boat or finds your last remote. You just gotta get in there and look at it. You can use reference pictures if you like to make the burn more realistic, but I was just going for it, know what I'm saying? Then I took a little bit of coagulated scab blood with like a burn. You do not need to cover it in blood because it just kind of takes away from what you're trying to do. And if you're severely burned like this, it cauterizes your veins and your blood supply would not necessarily come to the skin like readily, but I'm just using it to create a scab effect because I kind of thought it would just give it a little something extra, a little, little something, but you don't have to do it. Once again, it's up to you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Halloween tutorial. Have a safe and happy Halloween, and I'll see you in my next one. Love you, mean it. Bye. You can do your posing now if you want to. <laughs> hey. So when you do it, you're opening your eyes at regular speed and slowing it down? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're doing? Mm-hmm. I'm in my office. Okay, okay. Um, the last word is kiss seagulls. That's all I got. Alright, cool. Oh my god, that was actually really funny. <laughs> that was Chris's imitation of me in every YouTube video intro I've ever done. I just got read for filth by a fucking half man, half scab. <laughs>